Today, I'm going to give you a full ship tour of P&O Ventura, deck by deck, starting from the bottom and working our way to the top. Now, before we get started, it's probably worth saying that this is going to be quite a long video today, so make sure if you've not already, go get a cup of tea in your favourite mug and join me to get comfortable for the next half hour or so, because I want to show you every single inch of this ship. Now, before we get started, up on deck five, a little bit about the ship itself. Now, Ventura entered service back in 2008, and size-wise holds just over 3,000 guests and about 1,200 crew, so a pretty decent size of ship. Now, Ventura's got 14 decks in total, and we're going to explore the majority of them today. So passenger decks go from deck five up to deck 19, and remember, as with the majority of ships at sea, there's not a deck number 13 due to the fact it's considered to be a pretty unlucky number. Now, sister ships to Ventura, you'll find within p &O, you've got Azura, so pretty much an identical ship, and you'll also find this class of ship with Princess Cruises, so ships like Crown Princess, Diamond Princess, and Sapphire Princess. If you Google them, you'll see that these are almost identical ships, just with a, a different design for coming from a different brand. But hey look, that's enough about the ship itself. Let's get on board and I'll see you on deck five. Now just before we get started on the first venue, I did want to show you something. Now, loads of people ask me, Fraser, how on earth do you not get lost on these ships? Because they are huge. And the answer to that really is that on some ships, Ventura being one of them, the cruise line will have these really useful wayfinders where you'll see what direction the front is, what direction the back is, it'll show you where you are, and it'll also show you where all the venues are. So on Ventura, you'll always find that on both sides of the ship by every set of elevators. So that brings us to the first deck of the ship, which is Deck 5, or the P-Deck. Now, it makes absolute sense to begin this tour in what really is the heart of this ship, and that's the main atrium. Now, the view that you're looking at at the moment, so we're on Deck 7, looking down to Deck 5. So Deck 5 is that area on the bottom floor there. A few points to note on this atrium is that there's always life in this section here. You'll notice there's a dance floor at the bottom, so in the afternoon and in the evenings, you'll find dances happening in here. You've also got two really nice glass panoramic lifts heading up on the right hand side there. So you can get a view of what's going on as you go up or as you come down, which I actually really like that. And that brings us in to the first venue on this ship, which is Explorers down on deck five. Now in this Explorers section, you've got two key functions. Now on the left hand side, when you go in here, is everything to do with future cruise sales and also the guys you need to speak to for loyalty. And on the right hand side is everything to do with shore excursions. So if you're on the ship looking to explore a shore, then you'll come down here and you can book your excursions or even just speak to the guys about what's on offer on the right hand side here. And the next venue that we're going to look at on Ventura today is the library. Now this is directly beside that explorers section and I do quite enjoy a library on a ship but I don't necessarily enjoy reading in them. I just quite like coming and just chilling out, even just messaging on my phone and things but it's just a quiet place to escape from the busy atmosphere of the rest of the ship. Now one thing I didn't really like about this library though now is it's quite a small space but I actually thought the chairs were set up in too sociable a way here, with them all sort of facing each other. I definitely couldn't sit there and mind my own business and read a book, so I'd be more inclined to take it away and chill out in my cabin. Now, leaving the library, directly outside you'll find Tazine, which I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly, but that is the first of the onboard coffee bars that we're going to look at today. Now, if, like me, you quite enjoy settling yourself down in an armchair, with a coffee and people watching, then this is probably for you. You can see here that the chairs and tables go all the way out into the atrium 
right up to the edge of that dance floor so a really good place if you just want to watch what's going on. And over the other side of deck 5 you'll find the first of your onboard shops kicking in. So on the ground floor when I was on board it was mostly the alcohol sales that were happening here. I should probably plug this gin here, this is P&O's own gin, which if you're looking for a recommendation I would really recommend trying that when you're on the ship. Now the final venue before we look at the dining options on deck 5 is the art gallery. Now for those of you who have cruised before you'll know that art galleries feature on to be honest the majority of ships, I don't think I've been on a ship yet that doesn't have a gallery. I've never bought art from them but I do really enjoy just having a wander around even in an evening with a glass of wine, it's quite a nice way to kill a bit of time. So you'll find that down on deck 5. Now heading back across the atrium towards the rear of the ship is where you'll find the first onboard dining option that we're going to look at today. Now this is a cinnamon restaurant and this is one of the main dining rooms on board. Now I never really know what to say with a main dining room on a ship so I'll probably leave you to have a look around here yourself. But one thing that I would say is that the general design and the general vibe of the main dining rooms on this ship is pretty typical to what I've seen of cruise ships of a similar size. You'll see as you go round, it's a really big, really open space with loads and loads of covers in it. Now there are some ships that you see where the dining room is more split off into different sections. So on Discovery Princess for example, our dining room, although we were eating in the main dining room, we were in a section that only had five or six different tables in it. Whereas in here, you can see they don't have those more private, more secluded sections, so it's definitely going for the more traditional, open plan, everyone's in the same dining room. But hey look, I'll leave you to have a little look around here, and I'll catch you to begin the next deck. And just like that, we're on to our second deck. So moving up to deck 6 or the F deck, the first venue to look at on here is reception. Now, it's actually worth calling out that on here you'll find it called reception and not guest services. It tends to be the case that with the British lines, it tends to be referred to as reception. Now, the shopping continues on here. You've got the clothes shop that you've just seen a second ago. You've then got jewellery and you've also got a bit of perfume on this level as well. Price-wise, I found shopping on P&O generally to be pretty good value, so don't worry if you forget something and you have to buy it when you're on board. Now, further along deck 6 is where you'll find the exchange. Now, this is... I actually really enjoyed the theming of this. This is like a railway-themed bar, so it's perfect in here to come and grab a beer, and they had like the football, they would play the rugby in here, really good for like casual drinks before dinner so really really enjoyed it the theming was set around the railway as i said so above the bar you've got names of places in the uk so i think Dunoon's up there i think glasgow's up there and then the artwork that you've got around this venue also features rail travel from around the uk so naturally <laughs> i had to take video footage of all of the scottish stuff but i promise there was bits from the rest of the uk as well <laughs> Now, directly beside the exchange, you'll find Fortunes. Now, Fortunes is the onboard casino. And what I would say is that the casino market for British ships doesn't seem to be as big as with the American lines, for example. So, a much smaller casino than what I've seen on ships of a similar size from the American guys. But, do you know, I actually don't use the casino. I, I don't know how any of this works, but... I would imagine that this would have pretty much everything that you would need in it. But I'll stop talking and I'll leave you to have a look around and I'll see you when we're ready to go to the next venue.
Okay, now back across the other side of the atrium from the exchange is the Saffron Restaurant. Now, this is directly above the Cinnamon Restaurant that we looked in earlier, so hopefully you're beginning to get your bearings now. But you can see here, when you go in, again, this is almost identical to the Cinnamon Restaurant that we looked in earlier. The layout's pretty similar, the decor is only very, very slightly different, so if you rewind the video to look back at what the Cinnamon Restaurant looked like, you'll see that it's actually mostly just the colour scheme that changes in here to remind you what venue you're in. The location on the ship is exactly the same. The big, big benefit to that is that if you're one who tends to <laughs> get lost a few times when you come onto a ship, if you're allocated one of these two dining rooms and you go to the wrong one, it's really not a big drama because you're only up a flight of stairs or down a flight of stairs. Now, where things get a little bit different is in our next dining venue, which is the Bay Tree Restaurant. Now, in order to access this, you actually have to go up to deck 7 towards the back of the ship and then drop down at this staircase here, which will bring you into the entrance. You actually can't walk along through the other restaurant to get to here. Now, you'll see when you come in, the colour in here is actually pretty different to the other two. Now, there's a lot of reds in here. The theming is very different. And the thing that I absolutely adore about this dining room is that you look over the wake. Now, anyone who's been on a ship with me will know that I absolutely love that view out the back. And if you're early on board and you can request a table that looks out onto that, I would absolutely recommend it. I'm going to take you over to that side of the dining room now and give you a look at that view. But yeah, absolutely remarkable. Again, like I did earlier, I'm going to stop talking and let you have a little look around here and then I'll get you when we're ready to move up to the next deck. Okay, so we're now moving up to deck 7, which is also called the prom deck, and guess why? Because there's a promenade. Now, this actually is my favourite part of Ventura, I absolutely loved it, because it gave me the option to go for a walk without being in the crowds of the top deck. Now, this ship has got a full wraparound prom deck, so you can continue to do laps that are the entire length of the ship, so it's so refreshing to just get a bit of peace and quiet on these ships. The section that we're walking up at the moment, now this is right at the very, very front of the ship, and this is also referred to by some people as the clamshell, because if you look at the ship from the front, from ashore, you'll see an opening, a bit like a clamshell. Now, it's actually really unusual on a ship that you can walk right up here. You would find at times when we were sailing in and out of ports, if it was windy or if we had particularly rough seas, they would close this. Because it's right at the front, you would feel quite a lot of motion, so it would be very difficult to walk here if the ocean was rough. But yeah, if you've got a nice day, I would really recommend coming up here for the views because it really is spectacular. And heading back inside, so the venue that we're going to look at now is the, the Arena Theatre. Now, I was really impressed, actually, at the size and the quality of this theatre, given the size of the ship that we're on. And this theatre covers both Deck 7 and Deck 6. So we, we could have covered on the previous deck that you could enter here at the bottom, and I'll take you down to there. But 
I always prefer to enter from the top to try and get a better view, to be honest. Now, coming in, the one thing that really, really surprised me was just the size of this. I have been on ships of this size with an um, occupancy of around about 3,000, and the theatre has been a lot smaller than this, and it has definitely felt a lot more intimate. Now, I prefer the bigger theatres, so this ticked every single box for me. And if I take you down here, you'll see that you can also come down onto deck number six. Now, it's worth noting that there is an entrance on deck six and an entrance on deck seven. So don't worry about having to go up and then drop down. You absolutely can enter from down here as well. Now the next venue is the Glass House, so you'll find this directly beside the theatre on Deck 7. And this is essentially the onboard wine bar, and what probably grill house you would call it. In here, if you're looking for a recommendation, you absolutely have to come for steak and really nice wine. It is fantastic, the quality that you get in the Glass House on P&O. And actually, from a cost perspective, you don't really pay that much for the quality of what you're getting. So. My advice is that if you do speciality dine, I I probably would say that I need you to try the glass house and let me know how it is because I love it and there's one other that I want you to try but I'll, I'll talk you through that later in this video. Now one other thing that's worth mentioning in this venue is that they also do wine flights so if you want to chill out on a sea day and you want to just spend a bit of time maybe with a book, a few glasses of wine, it's a really, really good, really cost-effective way of doing it. And the surroundings in here are actually pretty unique. So you can see here, there's literally a full tree <laughs> growing in the middle of the restaurant. Now, directly outside the glass house is where you'll find celebrations, which is a pretty nice place to just chill out with a drink before dinner. And yeah, maybe do a bit of socialising, maybe meet up with some people here before you go to eat. And further along, you'll find the red bar. Now, the red bar is hanging over the atrium, so some really good people watching views in here. And those of you watching this who have previously sailed on a princess ship, the venue on them that I would liken this to is probably Crooner's Bar, because you've got a piano at the far end, you've got the atrium views, and yeah, you can just chill out here with a few drinks and watch the world go by. Now next up, heading towards the back of the ship, is the Tamarind Club. Now in here, on Ventura, during our cruise, we found that they would have trivia in here, they would also have some kind of lighter entertainment, so there was a really good like comedy vocalist in here, who we would quite enjoy before going for dinner, and they would also have um, like a live act in here after dinner as well, so there was generally always something going on in here. Now the next thing that I'm going to show you is the screen will go slightly darker and that's to show you that this room was also used on sea days as an onboard cinema which I didn't expect to see that actually but it was a really really nice idea because it's a part of the ship that during the day it's pretty quiet and it's also really dark so it serves the purpose absolutely perfectly but a lot of people that we met didn't actually realise this was on so maybe take that as a tip the on sea days you may find this used as a cinema. Now directly outside you'll find the photo gallery so if you've bought a photo package or if you've had a few photos taken on board you can come here to view them and you can also buy them from here as well. Now another thing that you can buy from this area is fresh flowers so if you are one that likes to have fresh flowers delivered to your cabin then you can order them from here. Now, I can't recommend these or I can't say don't get them because I've actually never tried them before. I reckon they would be quite a nice addition to a cabin, but generally as a solo traveller, I just haven't really seen a need to order fresh flowers. So yeah, maybe let me know if you've tried them. Are they worth it? And the next dining venue to explore with you is Sindhu, which is directly beside the photo gallery on deck 7. Now, I said to you earlier that the glass house is definitely worth a shot, and I absolutely would echo that sentiment with Sindhu. Now, Sindhu is the onboard Indian restaurant, which, 
To be honest, I've never been on another brand of cruise ship that specialises in an Indian onboard speciality dining option, but I have dined in here on Ventura and Britannia, and I honestly can say that the quality is really, really good. One thing that I have been really impressed with generally on P&O is the quality of the speciality dining. So for what you pay in here, I really don't think you're going to go wrong. I'll be posting another video shortly to look at what speciality dining looks like on this ship and I'm going to show you some pictures and some videos of our meals. But for now, take it from me, this is definitely worth a shot when you get on board. And now the final venue that we're going to look at on Deck 7 is Havana. So you'll find Havana all the way at the back of the ship. Now this is a venue that, to be honest, I always feel that this sort of show bar, show lounge at the back of the ship goes really unloved on a lot of cruise ships and a lot of cruise lines. And I think the reason for that is that a lot of the time it feels like they don't really know what to do with it. Now, in here, at night, it became, I guess, the onboard nightclub where there was a DJ, they would put the disco lights on and yeah, you could come in here after everything else had shut down and you could have a dance, you could have a few kind of late drinks. And to be honest, that's exactly what we did. So I would be lying if I said <laughs> that we didn't enjoy this venue. I think there was a number of nights that we were still in here at one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, which we won't go into the detail of at the moment. But <laughs> yeah, if you're looking for a late night, then definitely you want to be heading into here and yeah, get yourself up to the bar and enjoy your evening. Okay, so that's deck 7 complete, so there's quite a lot going on on that deck. And looking at decks 8 to 14, now all of these are exclusively passenger cabins, so we're not going to explore them today, with the exception of one venue, if you like, and that is the laundrette. Now you'll find the laundrette on various floors of the ship, so just always check on that deck plan, because a lot of people also don't know this is here. Now this is perfect if you need to iron clothes when you get on board, or if you want to wash or dry clothes before you go home. I really enjoy coming in here on the last day, especially if you've got a sea day, and throwing all your clothes in the washing machine and getting them dried, because not only does it save you the power when you go home, but it also means that you arrive home with no washing to do, which is such a luxury after your holiday. And that then takes us all the way up to deck 15, which is the Lido deck. Now, in order to show you the back of deck 15, it's probably worth going up a couple of decks and showing you the view down. Now, deck 15 has got this amazing tiered aft area here, which 15 is that section down there with the bottom pool, which is surrounded by loungers and there's also a bar down there that I'll take you down and show you shortly. Okay, so if you're not completely sick of those views, then let's look at the water side. Now, this is the onboard buffet on Ventura, and in here, you'll find that most hours of the day, you'll be able to eat. So, really good service in here from an hours perspective. Now, the location of this buffet is pretty typical to what you'll find on the majority of ships, and it's located almost directly at the back of the ship, and... You'll see here you've got your service areas on the left hand side and then you've got your seating areas on the right. Now you've also got the wine vending machines that you'll typically find them on cruise ships. Now you'll pay for every glass as you go so just be really careful because I don't believe they're included in beverage packages on p &O.
Now, one call out that I have to give is if, like me, you can sometimes be a little bit concerned about the quality of the buffet, if that, that's absolutely not something that you have to be worried about on this ship. I found it to be brilliant the whole time. Now, moving into a section of the ship that they refer to as the beach house. Now, this is a speciality dining option up, joined onto the buffet. Now, I never really clicked with this, to be honest, for the simple fact that, to me, it still sort of felt like the buffet. But, hey, I didn't eat in there, but if you did, let me know. Did you enjoy it, and would you recommend it to other cruisers? Now, as I said before, one of my favourite parts of the buffet on this ship is that it's located right at the back. So you can come and grab a coffee, grab a cake, and bring it out and sit in the sunshine, which I absolutely love to do. In addition to that, you've got this really nice bar area that overlooks the pool at the back of the deck. So really, really good if you want to grab a cocktail, grab a beer, and just kill a bit of time. Now, coming in from the very back of the ship, and this is us moving back towards the front now, you'll find the beachcomber pool. Now, in here, you've got what at the moment looks like an indoor pool, but the roof in here is actually fully retractable. So, unfortunately, the sailing that I was on, the weather we had wasn't good enough to retract the roof. We were cruising at Easter, so, yeah, it was pretty unlikely that we were going to have warm days in the Bay of Biscay, but, <laughs> yeah... The fact that we had a fully retractable roof was fantastic because it meant that on those colder days, this ship served really, really well because you, you still had a pool that you could go and chill out at. Now, one bit of advice that I always tend to offer people if I know they're going on this style of ship is that if you're due to be at sea all day and it's quite cold, if that roof is closed in here, it can get pretty busy on that bottom floor because it's quite a nice place to spend a day and to kill a few hours. Now, especially if there's families on with a lot of children in and out the pool, it can get really busy down there. So I always say, look, come upstairs. It's usually a little bit quieter. There's load, loads of loungers laid out here. You can see them piled up there. Yes, you've got some table tennis going on. Yes, you've got some other games on the other side. But it's significantly quieter than what you'll find downstairs. And you can also access the external deck from up here. So yeah, a really nice win. Now back down on that deck we were on a second ago, you'll find the main pool area. Now don't worry, it's not always raining. You'll see in a sec what this pool looks like in the sunshine, and yet it's a pretty nice place to spend the day. Now, didn't find this an overly large pool, but don't worry, I'll show you the other pool later in this video, which, in my opinion, certainly makes up for it. Now, if, like me, you enjoy sun worshipping when you go on holiday, you'll be wondering what to do about food and drinks. Now, directly beside the pool, You'll find the poolside grill here where you can get burgers, you can get hot dogs and you'll also find the poolside bar directly beside it which if we spin this round you'll see it's directly on the pool deck. And we're going up again so now we're on deck 16 or the sun deck and the first thing to cover on here is the reef which is the onboard kids club venue. Now similar to the medical centre I never find it appropriate to even try and go in and video in here, so you'll never find footage from the kids' clubs on my ship tours, but you'll find that up on deck number 16, if you're interested in it. Now, this deck is called the Sun Deck, and when you actually look at it, it's so clear to see why. If you're a sun worshipper, you're going to absolutely love this deck. This is, again, yeah, one of my favourites on the ship. 
Now, a top tip that I would give, this is actually relatively rare to find on a cruise ship, but if you go to the very front of deck 16 and basically just keep on heading forward down the side of what is the spa on the inside, you'll find this amazing viewpoint, which we cruised into Lisbon and anyone that's been to Lisbon before on a ship will know that you cruise under the bridge and yeah the view from here was just absolutely unbelievable because I'll pan around in a sec but you're literally looking straight over the front of the ship which yeah that that's pretty rare that you'll find that so a really good tip if you're cruising somewhere scenic make sure you remember this is here. Now slightly further back and actually built within the spa area is the oasis pool. Now quite a lot of people that I met thought this was actually a pay-as-you-enter pool because you entered it via the spa but it definitely wasn't you could also access it from this top deck people just didn't realize but really nice area and actually this completely compensated for the fact that the main pool was a little bit smaller than what I've seen on other ships. Now heading inside the first venue to look at is the ivory suite. Now this is the room that if you choose to get married on board you would probably get married in the ivory suite. It serves as the onboard wedding chapel. Now, unfortunately, when I was in to shoot this video, the room was set up for a, just like a social gathering. It wasn't set up for a wedding. So, unfortunately, you're not seeing here the true value of this room and just how good it could look if it was your wedding venue. But hopefully what you are able to at least get a bit of a visualisation of is just what the room is like so if you were to get married in here or if you were to use this for a function at least you can see here just what the room is like from a size point of view next up on our tour you've got the salon now a bit of advice i always give people is if you've never done it a haircut at sea on a sea day is one of the most opulent things I've ever done. I really, really enjoyed it. It's quite expensive, but yeah, I'd, I'd always recommend giving it a try. And beside there, you've got the onboard gym. Now, every cruise I've done, I always take my running kit. I always take shorts and t-shirt. Do I make it in here for anything other than shooting these videos? I'll maybe not confirm that because it might degrade me a little bit, but <laughs> yeah... If you're into hitting up the gym when you're on your cruise, this is what that looks like. And it's worth noting that the brands of equipment in here are all pretty decent, actually. So all the weights equipment is all from Techno Gym, which, yeah, I actually grew up in gyms with that um, in Glasgow. And yeah, really good nick. So moving up again, Deck 17, which is a sports deck. Now... It seems unusual to call it the sports deck and then move in to the Epicurean, which <laughs> is P&O's answer to a fine dining restaurant. This restaurant is in a really, really good position up on deck 17. You'll see in a second, but it overlooks the very back of the ship. So if you remember earlier, that tiered aft that we looked at earlier on, this restaurant essentially is at the top of that looking down over it now you've got a couple of different options in here if you've got really good weather you'll be offered a table inside or you can choose a table outside which i'll show you in a sec but if you are one who enjoys speciality dining then the epicurean is definitely worth a shout i said earlier speciality dining on piano i haven't gone wrong yet and i did eat in the epicurean on ventura and really really enjoyed my dinner so yeah i'd recommend having a think about this especially if you've got a special occasion on board really really nice and the final venue that we're going to look at on deck 17 is the retreat now the retreat is a private pay as you enter sun deck and you'll find that at the very very front of the ship now the only call out that i would make here is yes this area is beautiful yes it's much comfier than elsewhere on the ship but 
it's quite sheltered and for this reason I went in on day one but didn't actually go back in because I enjoy lying in the sun and I didn't really feel like I could do that here because it was very covered in. At the same time, if you've got cold weather on your cruise, then there's no indoor section on the retreat, so you would be outdoors the entire time. Now, moving up to deck 18, which was also referred to as the Sky Deck, the main venue up here is Metropolis. Now, this bar has got, again, similar to Epicurean, a fantastic vantage point. Now, Epicurean, as we said, looks over the back of the ship, as does Metropolis, but there's also a slightly different advantage to this bar in that it actually hangs over either side of the ship. So if you rewind back and look at this video at the point where I was showing you the ship from the outside, which I think would be way back at the start, you'll see a glass box that was hanging over at one side on the ship, and that is where Metropolis is located. So I'll take you over and show you in a sec, but the view from here is brilliant because not only can you see the whole back of the ship, but you also over here can look down the entire side of the ship. So I found it really, really nice to sit up here with a coffee, especially during rough weather, and just watch the ship making progress. It was really, really nice. So here's the view that you get when you do that. And yeah, I'll leave you to enjoy this for a second and then I'll meet you up on deck 19. Okay, you'll be delighted to know that we're nearly there. We're on the final deck of the ship now. So deck 19 or the ocean deck. Three things to run you through up here. Now, first of all, you've got the golf nets up here. So if you want to hire some golf clubs, hire some golf balls, you can come up here and practice your golf. Hidden next door, you've got your sports court. So you can come in here, you can play football in here, you can play basketball in here. This was really, really well used, actually. And directly behind those sections, you've got a really generic open deck space. Now, I actually wanted to highlight this because it doesn't actually show up on any deck plans as a point worth noting. But this was such a good vantage point. You can see here that on the left hand side of where we're walking right now, that looks right over the back of the ship. And on the right hand side, you can see all the loungers here. So on a sea day, if you've got good weather, this will be full of loungers that you can come and get and not too many people know this is here. So if you want a long lie in bed, definitely worth trying up here to try and get a lounger because the majority by the main pool will probably be gone first thing in the morning. But yeah, really, really good section up here on deck 19, so bear that in mind. And that's it. That's a full deck-by-deck -deck ship tour of P&O Ventura. So, look guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please think about subscribing to the channel. It really does help the channel grow and help you to bring more content from more ships. And yeah, for now, look, just thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And I'll catch up with you soon. But thanks very much. Bye.